In this video, we're going to introduce promises, but let's start by answering the question, what is asynchronous? Usually, when you hear about promises in JavaScript, you also hear the word asynchronous, but what is asynchronous? Well, first we have synchronous. Synchronous means something which is performed step by step. When you are walking, you put one foot in front of the other, and you don't do both at the same time, unless you're jumping. Another example is waiting for a kettle to boil before you make a cup of tea. Asynchronous, on the other hand, means you can do other things in the background without everything stopping and waiting. It's a bit like saying you might watch some TV whilst you wait for the kettle to boil, as opposed to just standing and staring at the kettle waiting on it. So JavaScript is what we call a single threaded language. This means only one thing can happen at once and at one time. Asynchronous JavaScript is the way in which background tasks, such as requests to servers, can happen without everything grinding to a halt, waiting for the single task to complete. It means that the asynchronous tasks get run outside of the main flow of the program. So what are promises? In your day-to-day -day life, you often promise people something in advance of you actually doing it. Perhaps you say, I promise I'll clean the dishes, or I promise I'll buy some milk. This is essentially how promises work in JavaScript. When you use a promise, you are usually writing asynchronous code, and you are making a promise or a transaction for something that is going to be done. Once the promise is done, then the task is either fulfilled or failed. This is like saying you either fulfilled or failed your promise of buying milk. There are two parts to understand when you're working with promises creating the promise, and then how to use the promise. So let's start by looking at how to create a promise. A promise is a constructor function, so you must use the new keyword, and promise needs to be capitalized when you create one. The promise takes a function as the argument with two parameters, resolve and reject. Resolve and reject are functions that can be called, so they need to be executed with parentheses. Resolve and reject get used to determine what happens when the promise runs. Let's look at the basic syntax for creating a promise. We'll declare a variable using const, which we'll call our promise. We then use the equal sign and the new keyword. Then we use promise. And we pass in resolve and reject as the parameters. Outside of this, we'll add a console log for our promise. Let's save this and run the code. When we inspect the promise, we see the promise state says pending. So let's look at promise states. There are three states which promises can have, pending, fulfilled, and rejected. The our promise we created does not resolve or reject anything, so it will remain indefinitely in the pending state. It's a bit like someone waiting on you to go out and buy your milk. To complete a promise, we use resolve or reject. Resolve means that the promise succeeds, and reject means that it fails. Any argument can be passed into resolve and reject, but often when we work with promises, we are making data requests, so sometimes it's an object that you would extract some data from. Let's update our example to show the outcome from resolving and then rejecting the promise. We'll start by adding reject. Let's save this and run the code. We can see the state has been updated to rejected and we get an error. Let's now change this to resolve. We'll save this and run the code again. We now see the promise state says fulfilled. Now let's go on to update our example so it better represents a request. We'll add a variable using let called did get milk. We'll set this to true. Next, we'll add an if statement, and we'll pass in did get milk. We'll add resolve into the if statement body, and we'll pass in the argument string, we got the milk. Then we'll use else, and set reject. This time we'll pass in the string argument, oops, we, did not get the milk. Let's save this and run the code. Because did get milk is true, the promise gets resolved with the message. If we set did get milk to false, the promise will be rejected. Let's change the did get milk variable to equal false. We'll save this and we'll run the code. 
This time we see the promise was rejected and we get the string we passed into reject. We can use then to run code once the promise has been resolved. Then is a method which will be executed immediately after the promise has been fulfilled. We can pass a callback to then, which has the code which will be run once the promise is fulfilled. Let's update our example to show this. We'll set did get milk back to true. Now let's go on to use the then method. So we say our promise dot then. We set a parameter for the result, which we'll call res and then we use the arrow function syntax. Inside, we'll say console.log res. Let's save this and run the code. When the promise runs, we get the fulfilled status, but we also see the res parameter printed. The res parameter gets passed from the argument we give to the resolve method. Let's change the argument we give to the resolve method to solidify our understanding of this. So we'll change the argument to be an object, We'll set the key message with the string as the value. Inside our console log for res, let's change it to be res.message. Let's save this and run the code. We get the message printed to the screen. When the promise gets rejected, we handle this by using catch. Catch works in a similar way to when we use then for resolving the promise. Catch will be executed immediately after the promise is rejected. Let's look at an example. We'll change the did get milk variable to be false. After using then, we'll say dot catch and set an error parameter. We'll use the arrow function syntax and then we'll add a console log for error. Let's save this and run the code. This time when the code runs, the promise gets rejected, so the code in catch gets run, and we get the argument we passed to the call to reject printed to the console. 